Okay, good day guys. Welcome to today your Princess Anna TV. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. Today we are going to be discussing about how to fill the NCAT evaluation form. And I'm going to be passing you through the process of filling the NCAT evaluation form, everything you need to know about filling the NCAT evaluation form, and step by step, we're going to be going through every column, what they mean, what they actually expect of you to put there and every single thing you have to know concerning the form that's what we're going to be dealing with today so if you feel the form i'm happy for you i'm sure you feel it right if you've not filled the form this is an opportunity for you to learn how to fill this form and fill it in such a way that you are going to be part of the people that will be eligible for the selection process so guys stay tuned i'll be right back <laughs> This is Princess Anu TV. We talk about aviation, motivation, and adventure. And if you've not yet subscribed, make sure you click on the subscribe button and click on that bell so that whenever I post any video, you'll be able to see it. I can't wait to start live streams with you guys, showing you how the runway is, runway 23, runway 05, showing you how it takes to pre flight, a live, I mean, live videos teaching you all these things. So I think when we get to over 2,000 subscribers, we'll be able to do all these things because then I'll be able to use my mobile device to do this. So, video. okay, so guys, let's go straight into how to fill the form, the stages you're going to pass through, everything you have to know while filling the form. So, that's exactly what we are going to be doing right now. So, guys, I hope you're ready. <laughs> so, the first thing you're going to be doing, I'm actually with a copy of my own form how I feel it, everything I put in my own form. So I'm going to be telling you exactly what they require of you. Like in this column, this is what you are supposed to feel. In this column, this is what you are supposed to feel. So and the first thing is that when you open the page, you're going to see some requirements. So you have to go through the requirements and read like eligibility status. They'll tell you, you need OSC, uh, sorry. I say OSC. <laughs> Sorry about that. You will be needing your WIAC, uh, and your, they will show you the credit load that you'll be needing for each course so that you will know if you're eligible before you click on apply. So, the next thing you're going to be doing is to register with your email. You check, you're going to see a column there that you have to register with your email address and password. So, if you have a, uh, if you have an email address, you have to put your email address there and put your password the password you want to use that's how you'll be able to register then if you have, if you have already registered with them before you are just going to log in like sign in in the sense that you're going to put your name your email address there and put the password that you used before to sign in not a different password if not it's not going to open so that's the second stage don't forget the first stage is for you to read the requirements and the second stage now fill in your email address and your password then now you're going to see a portal a portal is going to open i can't show you the portal here on my screen but i have the portal here um physically here with me i don't know if you can see you're going to have a portal this is actually my payment slip so you're going to have a portal and the portal is going to open because you can't start filling the form without payment they will not permit you because that's the next space you have to be able to fill the form uh sorry you have to pay before you can fill the form so let's just go straight after your payments online is about i think eleven thousand online though it might change so you just check the current amount they want you to pay i don't want anybody to scam you if you're not sure make sure you call the numbers you can see on their website and confirm the amount you're supposed to pay don't allow someone to tell you oh it's 20k you're supposed to pay me why it's 5k you're supposed to pay or someone says oh it's 10k you know like that just be sure of the amount you're supposed to pay online before you give anybody your money in vain so so when you're done with your payment it's going to bring out transaction successful with a tick but if you bought your form in NCAT that's straight from the office or any of their liaison offices which they have in lagos they have in abuja and i think maybe they have in kaduna i i really don't know about that but if you bought in any of the liaison offices that means you're going to pay them cash already so they, they are going to give you the form directly but if you're filling the form online after your payment if you make your payment online it's going to show you a tick and it's going to show you transaction successful with your rr number so make sure you get that make sure you also screenshot it 
in case for proof you see i love documentation a lot because when the chips are down it's only the document that you have that is going to show if you actually did the right thing or you did the wrong thing so try as much as possible to keep your documents right screenshot the page that it even showed you successful don't forget things can change also the RRO number and everything just make sure you screenshot it to be on the safer side so that's it for the payment aspect of it so the next step we're going to be going to is how to fill the form the first thing your surname okay you're going to have personal data and the uh, institution attended just make sure you have all these things on your form in case it does not finish loading on your page wait for it to load fully before you start filling so you don't feel half submit half and not submit half then you're going to have qualifications obtained co um, course of choice and your declaration so let's be going straight from the personal data so the first thing here is you're going to upload your passport there's a place for you to upload your passport make sure you upload a passport that is clear that is if like they, they are going to i think there's a dimension in that column for the kind of passport you're supposed to uh, upload so make sure you you know crop your passport make sure it fits into that dimension so that you don't submit your form without your passport these are little things that can disqualify you the next thing your surname you know your surname <laughs> i don't know your surname so you know your surname filling your surname your first name your other names Fill in the names that are on your previous documents. I mean the names that are on your YX certificate, the names that are on your first school living certificate, your, your statement of results. Fill in those kind of names. Don't fill in the name that they are calling you from home or the name that you don't have on any document. You just fill in, let me assume, they, are, they call you Blessing O at home. But the name on your document is Sister B. And you're coming to feel blessing. Oh, who knows you as blessing? Oh, for goodness sake, is what is in your document that they are going to use? So please fill in that and fill it correctly. Then the next thing, your contact information, please fill it correctly, like your home address. Then the places I'm even more concerned about again is your nationality and the date of birth, place of origin, especially for your date of birth. Please fill it in correctly. And I just hope and always pray that you always fall within the age limit that they are looking for because yes there's a hidden agenda about age sometimes i can't lie to you about that because of course i want you to have the best and that's why i give you the best on this channel so sometimes they have age bias depends so just make sure you feel in the kind of age your age not a kind of age feeling your right age if you will get it you'll get it that's the truth feeling your right age another thing is your height please go check your height don't assume because you might mistakenly go and fill in let me assume you go and fill in um one five about one five two and you're like oh, this person is too short meanwhile you're not even one five two you might be one six five you might be one six two you might even be one six eight and you're going to fill in one five something so please go check your height from the hospital or if you have a height ruler in your house make sure you check your height and fill in your height correctly because that one can can also disqualify you depending so uh another thing okay your next of king that you're going to be needing that throughout your stay here in enka to fill in your next of king rightly because that's the kind of person they are going to contact in case anything goes wrong with you in school then the next page is for institution attended now there's something about this institution attended like for me i filled in my primary school my secondary school and my university though they don't need to know about your university like any other maybe you had a master's or you have a phd or you have msc mba <laughs> because basically it's just your own level that you need to come into NCAT, so you don't need you know all those extra degrees so i think your your uh secondary school certificates and your primary school certificate is just fine but you can also add your masters though they don't need it but you can add your master so that in case things are you know so thick and they're trying to filter out people at least you can be considered as one of the good candidates that can make it through but they actually don't need it 
So the next thing is your qualification. I've said it before, your requirements for your uh, O level is five credits, and that's what they always put. Your five credits, including English and mathematics. And physics, physics is also very, very important. And then they used, they used to say geography is an added advantage, but I don't think they really look much about that. But just make sure you have your maths, your English, your physics, then any other two or three can be added to it. So, but for me, I filled in my whole results, everything I had there, I filled it in. Then, cost of choice, cost of choice. This is another thing that people make a lot of mistakes with. First course of choice, like for me, I put the standard pilot course. Then the second cho um, choice, I put the private pilot license course. Don't forget, I've said it before, I made a video concerning differentiating between what the standard pilot course and the PPL and CPL means. If you've not watched that video, I'm going to be keeping a link up here for you to watch that video. So guys, just fill in a standard pilot course as your first choice of course, then you can put in PPL as your second choice of course. That's exactly what I did so if you want to follow me you can do the same and uh, though even if you put standard pilot course and i don't want you to put it things like dispatch course or because you're already applying for the standard pilot course so why should you be putting dispatch course as a second option or you're putting cabin crew as a second option so please just be sure about what you're feeling so that you don't get automatically disqualified without even knowing what you want another thing here is after you finish filling all these things, please do well to confirm all the things you have filled. I mean, confirm your phone number, confirm your email address, confirm your name, confirm your date of birth, confirm these things. These are things are very, very paramount because in life, they will keep following your date of birth. If you put the wrong date of birth, it's going to catch up with you. If you put the wrong number, you're, you're not going to be able to contact you to come for the exam. If you put the wrong email, and they are sending email to people to come for the exam you will not get it so please confirm these details they are very very key and very very vital and also they will need your um your home address to be sending your results home <laughs> they actually did it to us so they can decide to send your results home so you need to put the right home address too for them then after you, you finish filling this the other part is going to be your declaration part that you're going to is kind of doing like an affidavit i swear that blah 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 but you didn't will i dash 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 hereby declare that the statement made in this application are true and to the best of my knowledge and i'm a citizen of the federal republic of nigeria and you know the rest of them so and you're going to put your name there as kind of your signature because you're filling it online but those that are filling it having the uh, hard copy with them and filling it they are going to do all these things written down by themselves and they are going to submit it just in the offices that they collected the form from so don't feel somehow that oh there's no space for me to sign no it's just going to be your name that's there and the date that's what is going to come out of the application form then also lastly the next part of it is your admission form card it's going to look like this it's going to uh, I want to quickly show you what it looks like. Okay, this is actually mine, but oh, I wish you can see. It. But anyways, it's going to have your application status on it, like your surname, your name, your first choice and second choice, and it's going to tell you if your application is pending, if it has received and everything. So that was how mine came out, and it's written application. So it had everything, my application status written on it so you're going to have this copy and the next copy you're going to have is your acknowledgement exam card this acknowledgement exam card this is what you're going to be bringing you're going to bring all these documents quite all right but this is what is going to give you permission to enter the hall because this is what you're going to show them and on this application exam card you're going to have uh, sorry acknowledgement exam card you're going to have your application number on it you're going to have your examination number on it you're going to have your name, your address, state of origin, date of birth, first choice, and second choice. And there's a place for you to sign, and there's a place for you to put your dates. So these things are very, very, I mean like very, very important. So guys, make sure you confirm everything. Make sure you have your acknowledgement form. Make sure you have your application status. Make sure you have 
your uh print out your application form how you filled it online because it's now going to come out in a kind of pdf format so make sure you have every single thing and join them to the documents you're bringing if you've not yet watched the video on things to carry for your while traveling for your examination please watch that video the link i will still leave it up here and also in the end screen is also going to be there if you've not watched what to bring to the examination hall please and um, please and um, please guys watch these videos it really help you a lot i want to see you i really want to see you <laughs> so guys till we meet next time even on the same channel keep watching present and tv and keep being the best keep striving for the best till we meet next time bye guys <laughs>